So let's read on. I think we're on verse 2. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Verse 3. Blessed shall thou be in the city, and blessed shall thou be in the field. So no matter if you're in a city, you're going to be blessed. If you're working in the factories, in the mills, and in, you know, you know, if you're working in this, some kind of office, or if you're doing, in the, if you're working in agriculture, guess what? You're going to be blessed. If you're a farmer, you're going to be blessed. So whether you're in the city or in the field, you're going to be blessed. You're going to be blessed. Verse 4, blessed shall, thy, blessed shall be the fruit of thy body. So that means your children. Your children are going to be blessed. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground and the fruit of thy cattle and the increase of thy kind and the flock of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy storehouse. Blessed shall be Blessed shall thou be when thou cometh in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They, they shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in thy storehouse and in, and in all that thy settest thy hand unto. Isn't that amazing? The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself as he has sworn unto thee if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of thee. So I'm going to read that again. The Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself. And as he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God, and walk in his ways, and all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, and in fruit of, the, of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swore unto thy father to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure. The Lord, the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in his season, and bless all the works of thy hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. Right? See, God don't want his people to, to always, to, you know, I know a lot of times we think in the word of God, it's always about not having much, looking like you're humble and you look like, you know, and I mean, you got to be humble. So that's true. But God can bless his people to have. He can bless his people to have, Amen. to be able to give others and not necessarily to have to be getting from others. He can bless his people to have because he owns it all, right? He said in his word, the cows on a thousand hills are mine. He has. The Lord has. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail, and thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If that Thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. So that's what we got to do. Amen. God rewards righteousness. He rewards righteousness. He's telling us, hey, listen, if you want to be blessed, serve me. Do what I tell you to do. Serve me. Forget about what you know, Billy Bob down the road told you about how to get by. Forget about what you see on, you know, on MTV or whatever, what they're doing. I'm telling you this. He said, I'm telling you 
He, he, he's, I'm telling you that if you hearken, if that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to do, to observe and to do them. He said, he told us what's going to happen. He will make us the head and not the tail. If we hearken on what he, unto what he tells us to do, he has rewards for us. I don't know why people want to go out there and do it the other way. Do it God's way. You don't have to have any repercussions. You don't have to worry about going to jail because you did it the wrong way. You don't have to worry about losing it because somebody, you know, somebody now because you don't, they don't like you now, they're taking it away from you. Because what God has for you, no one can take from you. Right? God can only, only God can allow something to be taken away from you. So if we do it God's way, we'll be blessed. Let's turn to Psalms 37 and 20, 25. 37 and 25. I have been young and now am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken. See what I mean? God rewards the righteous. I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. So now... If, you, if we're in a state where we're begging for certain things, right? We're asking for this and not the other because we don't have, we got to ask ourselves, are we doing it the way God said to do it? Are we doing it the way he tells us to go about it? Are we, are we, are we doing what we're supposed to be doing? Because he said, I've never seen the right, I've never seen, I've not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Psalm 37 and 28, same chapter. For the Lord loveth judgment, loveth justice. The Lord loveth justice. You put justice in where judgment is. The Lord, for the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints, and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever. They are preserved forever. Preserved forever. Think about that. See, when you read, think about what you read. He said, we are preserved forever. That means that we're not going to go bad, right? When you preserve something, it don't go bad, right? It's taken care of. It's, it, it, it keeps its quality to it. He said, we are preserved forever. But the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. Remember I said, they may got their reward here. They may have a reward here. But it's not going to be forever. He said, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. So let's remember. Let's remember. God rewards righteousness. He rewards righteousness. Turn to 2 Kings chapter 20 and verse 1 through 6. I told you God rewards righteousness. He rewards righteousness. He rewards it. In those days was King, excuse me, in those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet, and the prophet Amos, the son of Amos, came to him. And said unto him, Thus said the Lord, Set thy house in order, for thy shall die and not live. Then verse 2, Then he turned his face to the wall. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now I have walked before thee in truth, and with a perfect heart. That sounds like righteousness, doesn't it? Sound like righteousness. God rewards righteousness. Oh Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. Sound like he was righteous. Done that which was good in his sight. And 
Hezekiah wept sore, so he didn't want to die. He just said, okay, Lord, I'm, I'm ready to go when you take me. I'm ready to go. Hezekiah didn't want to go. He wept sore. And it came to pass a four, Isaiah was gone out into the middle court. Before he left his house, before he left the castle, because King Hezekiah was a king, before he left his castle, left the house, before he got off the grounds, before he got off the grounds, and it came to pass afore as Isaiah was gone out into the middle court, that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people. Thus said the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. Woo. I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Hallelujah. Hey, Hallelujah. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day, thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord, and I will add unto thy days 15 years. Thank you, Jesus. And I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king Assyria. And I will defend this city for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. Thank you, Jesus. God rewards Righteousness. God says he's going to do something to his people whenever you call, recall God on it or you ask God to do something. God was going to destroy, destroy the, uh, the children of Israel out in the wilderness. He was going to destroy them out in the wilderness. Right? Because they weren't doing what they were supposed to do. They didn't act like they knew who God was. God, they didn't, God did not like it because they act like they didn't know who he was. And so he said, I'm going to destroy him. And Moses came to him and said, no, God, don't destroy him. Because then it'll just look like you destroyed him because you couldn't deliver him to where you told him that you could deliver him to. Don't destroy him. See, God can have, when you, when you walk in righteousness, you can approach God. You can walk to God and approach him. When you walk in righteousness. Remember, God, how I walk before you in Preach. truth Preach. and with a perfect heart. Preach. Remember that, Lord. Preach. When you walk, when you stand in righteousness, you can do them Turn things. to Acts 10, verse 1 and 4. This is our last text in this outline. Here, okay. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a satirian of the band called the Italian band, a devout man. See, this is what, again, righteousness. We're talking about righteousness. A devout man and one that feared God with all his house. He made his whole house feared him, feared God, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. Always. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of God coming into him and said unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid. And he said, what is it, Lord? And this is what the angel said. And he said unto him, thy prayers and thy alms are come up for a memorial before God. Before God, he reached God by his living. By him living a righteous life, he reached God. He was able to reach him. So now, this is why we need to live a righteous life because there's times in people's life when they need God. They need him instantaneously. They need him right away. And you could be like King Hezekiah. Remember, I walk, remember how I walked before you, God? I need you to step in for me. I need you to stand here for me. I need you to step in my place and take over, God. I need you to speak the word for me. I need you to rain down manna from sky from me for me. Because I'm hungry and I need to eat. And I don't have any money in these pockets, Lord. I need you to step in. 